Hello my friends, this is Sylvie Curry, Lady of Q. And today I want to tell you about one of the most wonderful experiences that I was fortunate enough to be a part of. It's approximately a week or two since I left a shooting site to film for Netflix a series of challenges, barbecue challenges, called Smoked. And while it's still fresh in my mind, I wanted to get it on video so that I could present it to you now with all the thoughts and experiences and all the good stuff that goes with being there doing that show. I won't be able to release this video until much later, so if you're watching it now on YouTube, it's almost eight to ten months later since the shooting of the video, of the videos. Let me start by saying that I am very, very happy that, as I, that I was a part of shooting of this video. It all started, well, about April, Mayish, somewhere in there, and I received an email from, of all people, my daughter, informing me that someone had sent her an email saying that there was going to be a barbecue TV show and they were interested in talking to me about it. And of course, there was no branding on it, no labeling, just a little statement saying, hey, we're trying to get in touch with Sylvie Curry. And this is going to my daughter's email address, keep in mind. And if you would please forward this to her so that she can contact us at the telephone number that was on the email. Well, she thought it was a scam, and so, but she did forward it to me. And I was curious about it, so I did call the number and I called the number and I spoke to a very nice young lady who told me a little bit more about the series. And let me start off by telling you why I became interested. First of all, she said it was a series, a barbecue TV series, competitions. And it was not like any regular barbecue competitions like KCBS or MBN or FBA or PNWBA or IBCA. This was going to be a unique type barbecue TV series. And one of the most important aspects of it was that it was not going to be anything like some of the shows you see on TV now where they give a contestant a big basket of things and tell them to cook it in 20, 30 minutes. There were not going to be any bloopers or things like that to make each contestant fail. They wanted us to succeed in every cook. In addition to succeeding in every cook, they wanted to show how barbecue people are very friendly with each other, how we have a great time at competitions, how we interact with each other, how we help each other out. And I thought, you yeah, know, this might be interesting. So yeah, I'll throw my name in a hat, I'll do it. So moving on from there, I then received another phone call from a young lady and she told me a little bit more about the series and it was sort of like an interview type telephone call Well, she asked me about my background, what I did, how I got into barbecue, a little bit about my team, Lady of Q, and all those different aspects of my barbecue journey. We discussed that and I did ask her a few questions like, you know, we're going to be taping this, these episodes and they want a three-week commitment in taping it and it's going to be out of town. It was to be taped in Georgia and we were told someplace near Atlanta, Georgia and that we would be, we would not be able to fly back and forth to your hometowns or anything like that. You would be secluded out there until you were eliminated from whatever challenge you were eliminated from. So therefore a three-week commitment. In addition, at that time, she didn't have any information on prize money or the cost or how we would be reimbursed for certain things. It was more or less, are you interested? This is what we're doing. And if you want more information, we'll continue on this audition. So yes, I decided that I was gonna continue on. And one of the other things that made it even more enticing to me is that it was being uh, produced by Netflix and of course Netflix has this very reputable company and they're not going to do anything that's you know controversial for the contestants. In addition we were told that 
be way that it would be laid out would be very similar to a baking program, the Great British Baking Show, that is filmed in, uh, I think, the UK. And it would be that type of a format, though we wouldn't be cooking or baking, but it would be that type of a format. So, of course, once again, I'm excited about it, so I decided to go on and move my name forward in the auditioning process. So where do we go from here? Auditioning, I didn't realize was going to be such a very involved and time-consuming process. It was exciting to do, and I have no... I would do it again. But what it involved was we needed to submit a lot of photographs and video of us cooking, products we've cooked, video of us working in the kitchen, our barbecue, or with our grills, or with our smokers. And those had to be submitted to the casting group. So after putting together some things, I did submit that. And I heard from them maybe a few, a week or so later, and they were still interested. And so we moved on to the next segment of this auditioning process. They wanted to make sure that I really and truly knew how to cook. And then not that I was just submitting videos of varying things where it was staged, or I was not taking pictures of foods that possibly I had not cooked. So they requested that I do a cook for a judge or a group of judges and have them either come to my home or someplace near my home where they could taste my food and get an idea of, can Sylvie cook? So I waited a few days and then I finally got another call back from their culinary person who said that they were gonna waive the judging process because they'd gotten references from a number of different sources and I have no clue who they were. But they got a lot of references from people and other sources that said that, yeah, Sylvie can cook. So we moved on from there and we went to the next phase where then I received a number of Skype interviews. And let me preface this by saying that I did have a previous Skype interview with the casting people. I guess they wanted to see how I interacted on camera. Can I put two words together? Is this person really you know, able to carry through on a TV show. They then scheduled an interview with me on Skype with a culinary person who wanted to have information on what I use for rubs, what I use for sauces. She wanted to get an idea of what I cooked on, what my equipment was, and just general information on how I barbecue or how I fit in this competition barbecue. Uh, series. So I did put together all my rubs and things and all my spices and my sauces and I had my smoker set up so I could do a sort of like a go through with her on that through Skype. It was a very nice interview and the gist of it was that during this filming of this barbecue television show we would not be able to bring our usual sauces, our usual rubs, and they would not be provided for us. What she could tell me was that there would be a pantry that would be set up with all the different things that we would need to make our own sauces and our own rubs. And that they could not give us, they could not provide for us all the different things because of the number of people and the different things that everybody uses. We'd have to just start from scratch. Plus they wanted to show barbecue from scratch and not using commercial products that they had to hide the labeling on, etc. We then talked a little bit about the type of woods I use and why I use those woods, my different smokers and how they're how they're set up, is it a reverse flow, is it an egg, is it a, a, a stick burner, all different things about the type of smokers I use and the grills. One of the things that also came to, to my knowledge was that there absolutely would not be any gas grill of any sort. Everything would be cooked on open fire, charcoal, and wood. And that we would have 
access to a number of different smokers and grills, etc., which will be revealed to us at a later date. The culinary specialist then advised us that we did have access to a pantry which would have any spice, herbs, or anything we needed to make rubs and to make our sauces. So it wasn't necessary for us to use what we commercially use in com competitions. I mentioned before that there were a lot of photos that were requested early in the auditioning process. And <laughs> continuing throughout the process, we were requested to submit more and more and more photos and videos. And sometimes, it, it was, you know, we had to submit photos and videos that we had already submitted to another person. Finding out that casting was a whole different group of people from production and from Netflix and from all the other different groups. And they didn't really communicate all of that information to each individual group. So a lot of things had to be resubmitted. Moving on from culinary, then speaking to some of the other producers and the people who were in charge of getting this Netflix production going, we were advised that there are a number of different things that we would be requested to submit. One of them being a background check. And that background check would be a all-inclusive check going back years and years. We also had to give access to our Facebook and other accounts, not really access, but make friends or uh, include others so they would be able to look at our Facebook page, at our Instagram page, Twitter newsfeed, any of, and any other different social media that we had. We were also told that we needed to undergo a psych test, a psych evaluation. And I guess that's just to make sure none of us are crazy. So moving on, we started in May. Now we're somewhere into about June, July. And a lot of things are happening. A lot of things are being requested. At this point in time, I'm told that I'm probably in the top, I don't know if it was top 40, but anyway, the top number of candidates that they have gone through and evaluated and reviewed. So they're going to continue the auditioning process for me. And that was nice. I was really happy about that because at this point in time, I'm really getting excited about doing this show. So where do we go from here? Around the end of June, I then get a phone call from someone in casting letting me know that they were submitting their top 20 choices to Netflix executives to make a final selection of who would be included in the show. And I was in that top 20. In addition, what we were told was that they would select 10 for the cast and there would be I believe 12 to 14 total, with two to four being alternates. And those alternates would be people who would be included if the top 10 were unable to follow through. I was not told at this point in time where I was in that top 14, but that I would be one of those. So once again, I'm pretty happy. So we wait and we wait. I think I went through a couple more interviews with people just calling and asking general questions about how long I'd been married, how old my kids were, all those different questions about me. And the reason for that was that they needed to submit to the Netflix executives, who is Sylvie Curry? What is she about? What is her family life about? What makes up her barbecue journey from the beginning until now? And to tell that story, they needed different aspects of my life to include in this bio. Then I get a call from them, I guess about a week or so later, saying that now I'm in the top 14, I believe. No, I'm in the top 10. And once again, I think I jumped with joy and my husband came in like, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? And it's like, I'm in the top 10, which means I'm going to Atlanta. And at this point in time, no one has ever said that there would not be 10 in the, the show. It was always the top 10. So I'm very happy about that. The next step was to get a psych interview. <laughs> and it's so funny. What happens is that this young lady sends an email with a 
uh, I won't call it a packet, but a series of questions. And there are 567 questions on this questionnaire. And you have to answer either yes or no. And when you answer yes or no, she has to be looking at you on the video to see how you're, to make sure that you're the one who's answering these questions, I guess. And it was very, you know, nothing serious. She was in her own home taking care of her, her child and just intermittently watching me as I sit there and check off yes and no, these varying questions. And of course, you know, in any psych interview, some of the questions that are asked are very weird. You know, questions like, I think one of the ones was, you know, what was my childhood like? Was I abused? Did I come from a loving family? Did I ever have thoughts of being uh, another gender? All these different weird things. And you could tell by the way the questions were, were asked. They were asked in multiple different ways in different forms throughout the whole questionnaire. And they just wanted to get at who you are, what your background was, are you stable, I guess is the word. Then after I finished doing that questionnaire, and I think it took, I knew it took over an hour, I then copied the questionnaire that I had answered and I sent it to the young lady and she submitted it to her, um, her psychologist, uh, the doctor who was going to be doing a Skype interview with me at a later date. So about maybe a week or so, maybe even more later, I then get a phone call from the psychologist and it was just a general Skype to Skype type thing, asking me general questions about some of the answers that I had on the questionnaire. Nothing big, nothing, you know, significant, just general questions. So I guess based upon that interaction with him, I must have passed because I did get on the show. In addition, my background check had been submitted and done and I, I'm in the top 10, so must not have been anything in my background that would show that I was not unworthy of being in the show. So that was a good thing. So we wait and we wait and we wait. I'm asked to submit more and more videos, some of the same ones again. I speak indirectly with a number of different producers from different aspects of the show. And it's very hard to determine who is who, who's in charge, who's over who. It's just people will call or send you emails requesting information or asking you to do certain things. So one of them was to submit wardrobe. This was very interesting, wardrobe, which meant that for the eight episodes that would be shot, whether or not you were included in those episodes, you needed to have eight different wardrobe changes. And there were specific guidelines as to how that wardrobe uh, should be. For example, no stripes, something like that. And you know, specific colors uh, would not be good and specific background designs and things like that would not be good. So I took multiple pictures of different outfits I had that I would be wearing on the show, or supposedly wearing on the show, and submitted those. A little later, I get a call back saying that my wardrobe is okay, but they would like a couple more things. I think I may have submitted a couple of tops which were very similar, and it was very hard to tell whether or not they were the same top or not. So a couple more outfits I had to put together and submit those. So I spent a little bit of money on pants and tops. In addition, I was told that part of my wardrobe for the show would be that I had to wear a bandana, not a hat, not my regular hair. I had to wear a bandana. And the reason for that, because that was part of my, part of me. And if you'll find that in most of my barbecue competitions and pictures that I take, I always wear a bandana. And purpose of that is, in the beginning, it was just because I'm cooking to make sure that, you know, I was protected from shedding hair. And after a while, I just got used to wearing bandanas. So I always put them on. The producers then introduced themselves as the people who would be on site shooting this show and who would be working hand in hand with us throughout the whole all the episodes and that was very exciting. In addition, culinary got more involved and 
who knew? Uh, the culinary person submitted to us a whole packet of information on barbecue from smokers to types of meats to types of side dishes and everything that could be included in a barbecue meal. There were no specifics of you will cook this or you will cook that. It was just in general. Side dishes, and side dishes may include casseroles, they may include slaws, salads, they may include things like mac and cheese or, mac or collard greens, anything that you can think is a side dish. They wanted us to have familiarity with cooking. And they didn't give us any specific things, just say become familiar with cooking side dishes, become familiar with cooking barbecue from different parts of the country, be familiar with the types of meats that you're going to be cooking, the parts of the animal, the cuts, what is more tender, what is not more tender. Be familiar with different types of foods that are prepared in, say, North Carolina versus South Carolina versus Kentucky versus Washington State versus California, just to be familiar with all of these different things. And I took that as meaning that during this show, somehow or other, different aspects of what they're telling us to become familiar with are going to show up somehow or other in the challenge. So I took this packet very seriously. I studied it and studied it. I watched YouTube video after YouTube video. I read. I went through cookbook after cookbook. I did my homework. I was ready. They then asked us to, to submit what they call homework. We want you to put together your signature dish. And we want you to put your signature dish and a couple of sides and a dessert on a platter. And take pictures of it and submit it to us. And I took that as they want to see whether or not, you know, I knew how to put together a platter, presentation wise or whatever. And this was requested of all of us candidates. So very simple. I put together something that I usually cook for holidays for my family. And that was very easy, no, a no-brainer. And I submitted that. Also during this course, we were asked to be prepared to bake something and to either bake it on a grill or bake it in a smoker or some type of dessert that did not require baking. We needed to have some, something in our head on those type of recipes. And after a while, it was, it was fun because I like going through recipes anyway, but after a while, I was like, oh God, my life now is involved in just going through recipe after recipe, being familiar with what the ingredients are for cooking barbecue and on the East Coast. For example, mustard-based sauces versus vinegar versus sweet sauces, cooking different parts of the hog, spare ribs, uh, pork chops, loin, tenderloin, any part of it. The cow, the same way. Get me familiar with all these different aspects of cooking. So that homework assignment was for approximately, I guess we had about three weeks to go through and do that. And as I once again said, it was very exciting. One of the other parts of that homework assignment, it sort of gave us an idea of what cookers would be using. Because it described in the little packet how a reverse flow cooker works, how a big green egg works, how a pit barrel cooker works, how a vortex cooker worked, how what other type of cookers did we have? We had a big green egg, we had a vortex, we had a bit barrel, we had a lang, and oh, and had a, a Weber kettle. And so it described how all of these worked and it even gave us YouTube videos that we could watch to get familiar with operating these different pieces of equipment. So we knew at that point in time what it is that we, we would be cooking on. Secrecy, there was a lot of secrecy in all of this. At no point prior to me arriving in Atlanta were we told who the other candidates were, who was coming. I did ask and we were told that we would learn that when we got to Atlanta. 
We did not actually find out what hotel we were going to be in until maybe a couple of days before we were expected to be there. And I did not receive my flight information also for at least a couple of days before I was supposed to be there. We were told the date, and I knew that we would be traveling sometime September 7th of 2019. And what time, what airlines, or whatever, that was never disclosed to us. One of the other things that came up, and this came up family-wise with my husband and all, was that since I was going to be gone three weeks, he was wondering if he could also come out and just be in Atlanta with us. And I was, um, wasn't directly told no, but the gist of the, the conversations all was that we would be secluded and no other um, people would be allowed on the set. It would just be as, us as the contestant. During this week or two before traveling to Atlanta, we were told to list out approximately, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think there were like 15 supplies, our personal supplies that we would like to bring. In addition, I think it was like 10 special products that we wanted to have in the pantry. And these products could be anything excluding any commercial sauces or rubs. And we submitted those lists, and I, the couple of things I put on my list, I was told that um, I could not bring. And, but most of the things I could bring included, I wanted my own knives, just because I'm familiar with using my own knives. I think I had on my list my own scissors, because I have a pair of scissors which fit my hand very well, and I really love. I also brought my pink, Piggy, my stuffed pig, which is always in my trailer with me at all barbecue competitions. I also brought a timer, a kitchen timer, which is a four-stage kitchen timer. I think what they were going to have at the stations was just one little timer, which just did one timing, but I, I'm familiar with my timer. One of the things that I also like to use are cotton gloves underneath my latex or nitro gloves. And they are they were going to supply us with the gloves, but not the cotton gloves to go in them. So that's one of the things I requested. As far as some pantry items, there were varying things I requested like miso. I think I requested something like some special beef, uh, pork or beef based products. Some other type of uh, things like they had preserves on there, but I specifically wanted some apple jam, and I specifically wanted some cranberry jam. So I did request those, and my list was approved. However, let me just state now, my cranberry jam and my apple jam were not in the pantry, but I did have access to strawberry jam, and I think it was raspberry, and one other one, I think it was apricot. The other thing that they did not have on the pantry list that I felt very important I use a lot of rosemary in cooking, and they did have rosemary listed, but it wasn't fresh, so I did request that they do stock fresh rosemary, and that was accommodated. So travel and packing. I packed everything, and because I was bringing my knives, it was very important that I have checked in luggage, because you can't take knives on an airplane. So I packed everything, I think Thursday night, and I made sure that my check-in bag was no more than 50 pounds. And then I also had a carry-on, which I had things like my laptop and my, my iPad, speakers and things like that, just little toiletries, medications. Then I get a email Friday evening stating that wardrobe that they would be providing wardrobe for us, so we did not need to bring our own wardrobe. <laughs> A day late, dollar short, because I'd already taken the tags off all the things that I bought the previous day, and it was all packed away, and everything was nice and snug in this suitcase. I was then told that go on and bring it, uh, but that it would not be used during the, the shooting. They would provide a wardrobe for us during the shooting. And they did provide a picture of what my wardrobe would be. And it was a pair of pants in the style that I usually wear, a top similar to tops that I usually wear, but it's all solid colors, and an apron. And I was told I had to have the bandana, bring my bandanas. 
and if you had any other accessories that had to be something that I will wear for each taping of each show because we will be using the same look for each show anyway it's Saturday morning I get on the plane I'm excited I'm going to Atlanta the only thought in my head was I want to do very well on the show. I know that I have the background experience to do very well, but I just need to make sure that I follow through on being me, Lady of Q, Sylvie Curry. And for sure, I don't want to be the first person eliminated. Okay, that being. So, on the airplane, I spent a lot of time, once again, still going over recipes in my phone, I have a lot of notes on recipes and I start reviewing all of this just to go through so I'll be fresh in my head and taking little notes about different things so that I would remember them later on. Get to Atlanta and it was very exciting because it was very well thought out and organized. There was someone there the whole time to sort of direct us. Even before I could turn on my iPhone, I got a text saying, have you landed yet? And then once I said I've landed, then they said, okay, we'll meet you at such and such a gate. Your luggage is gonna be at such and such a uh, baggage claim. And we'll be there. And describing what they had on so that I would recognize them. So that was the easy process. I met a lot of the different people there who I would be working with over the next three weeks, hopefully. and. We all got into a van, and there were a couple other people that the van was picking up because they were coming in at similar times to me. So we just had to wait at the airport a little while. It was no more than 45 minutes, I don't think, waiting for two other uh, people who would be on the cast to get on the, on the van. And this was the first chance that I got to meet some of the cast. And the first person that I met was a young lady named Amanda. And Amanda was from the East Coast, and I don't really remember what city she's from, but someplace on the East Coast, and I want to say something like Maryland, Virginia, or something like that. And the next person I met was a young man, his name was Shotgun. Very boisterous man. Very gruff voice comes across, and you could probably hear him from here to forever and very, very talkative. His mouth was, he never stopped talking. And hey, Shotgun, if you're watching this, I'm just describing you. Um, so we all, on the van, the three of us, and our driver, John, and John describes a little bit about what's going on as far as Atlanta and different things that are filmed there and productions. And he can't say anything about the set or anything that's going on there, so he's more speaking on generalities regarding just Atlanta and filming, that type of thing. Then we get to the hotel, and there was, I don't think there was anyone in the lobby other than um, the three of us and John, and I think one of the, I'll call them handlers, and let me describe a handler a little bit later on. But anyway, we were all there, and I checked in, got my key, and I was told that someone from wardrobe will be coming to my room, so that I could try on the clothes to make sure they fit and just to get an idea of how my look was going to be. So I head to my room and try to settle in, get things done, knock, knock on the door, and lovely ladies come in and they describe to me, okay, these, this is your outfit, and they have me try it on to make sure it fits and to make sure that there wasn't anything else that they needed to add to the garment in order to create my look. And so we went through that process, so I'm set for wardrobe. A little bit later on, I get this text message from um, someone else saying, you know, hey, meet us in the lobby at such and such a time. And this was gonna be our meet and greet. Let me continue by describing handlers. <laughs> and maybe that's not the term to use because we came up with all sorts of terms while we were there. There are a number of production assistants who are always available to us 24 hours a day. There were some that were there every day and there were some that were there only maybe two or three times a week. 
but there was always someone there. And I call them handlers because they were to make sure that we ate, that we had food, that if we were on set and it was very, very hot, that we stayed hydrated, we got electrolytes. They made sure that we didn't do anything weird, like try to take off and go party somewhere. If we needed to go to a grocery store or any type of store to purchase anything we wanted, and that could include toiletries and alcohol, that we could do that, and they would actually drive us there. One of the guidelines was that we were not allowed to leave the hotel without letting them know that we're leaving and where we're going and that they would have to approve that. And I found out later on that the primary reason for that is more to protect us because they didn't want us to, I won't say get lost, but to get hurt or to run into any other complications that they could not control because they're filming a television show and we are all there and they wanted to make sure that we were there for the entire time and that we were well. So I, you know, I understood that. In addition, they want to make sure that we didn't say run off and didn't make it back or got involved in accidents or whatever. So that was very well controlled. So some of the terms we used for them uh, were like, we were the convicts and they were our COs, our correction officers. And we'll find out later on that even on the set, we were not allowed to freely roam around the set the actual television set. If we needed to go to any area of the set, they would have to accompany us. And that means that if we needed to go to wardrobe, they walked us to wardrobe. If we needed to go to the bathroom, they walked us to the toilets. If we needed to go to the actual set, because we're getting ready to film, they were always with us, walking with us, or as we used to say, hurting us to the set and hurting us around. And primary reason for that was that they wanted to make sure that we were not in any area of the set that we shouldn't be. A lot of filming goes on that we're not directly involved in, so they needed to make sure that we were not in camera sight of something that was being shot, or that if there was something going on on the set regarding a challenge, for example, if they were setting up varying different smokers or something like that, that we did not see what was going on because everything that we did, we did as a group. And there was no individual who had access to something that someone else didn't have access to. So that was understandable. And after a while you got used to it because you, you knew that, okay, if I needed to go to the bathroom, you know, they would say, okay, anybody want to go in the bathroom run and say, yep. And whatever number of us would do that. So those were our handlers. So now let's get back to another aspect, other aspects of filming this barbecue TV show, which they called Smoked. Meet and greet. So this was very exciting for us, or for me anyway, because this was my opportunity to meet all the other contestants. The first time that we could all get together other than the other two I met on the van coming from the airport. So I walk into the room and there's some of the producers, some of the other handlers, which we call the COs, and all the other contestants. We're all there as a big group. We introduce ourselves, talk amongst each other. There's one other lady there, Tina Cannon, who I already knew, and she's the only one of all the other contestants, or cookers they called us, that I knew. We met previously at the World Food Championship as a competition for lady pitmasters. So we hugged each other and we just talked about the old days and told all the other people about how we met before and, and what we did. And this was also time for us to have dinner. And so they uh, provided meal, a meal for us. I think we walked over, we were in the Hampton Inn and a lot of the other crew were in the Holiday Inn which was next door. And so we walked over as a group to the Holiday Inn where they had set up dinner for us. So we ate. We were introduced to a lot of other different people and network executives and producers and 
I, everybody. We got to meet all of them. We got a little bit of an orientation as far as what's going on, what's going to be expected of us, what we're going to be doing for the next couple of days. And at this point, it came up that there were 10 people in the room, 10 cookers, 10 contestants, and that only eight of us would actually start filming on Tuesday. And we did not know which eight. And so speculation all around the room, you know, curiously, everybody's looking at each other like, who's not gonna make the cut type of thing. So there was a little bit of anxiety involved, but at the same time, we're still getting to know each other and we don't know what's going on. So this was uh, our first introduction to what's going to happen next. We were told that we... I'm trying to remember which day was it. It was Monday. So we got there on a Saturday. So that Monday, we were, t we were told to take our wardrobe, to dress in our wardrobe, and to... Oh, where we? No, we weren't told to dress because we didn't have our wardrobe with us. We were told to meet down in the lobby that Monday morning and we would all be driven to the set. And this was a more, even more exciting part of the whole thing because finally we get to see where we're going to be cooking. And we got to see what, what's there, the pantry, the set, the whole thing, the cookers and all that. And part of that whole day, Monday, was also we were going to do some preliminary interviews. And these interviews were more a introduction of ourselves to the viewers, those who would be watching the show. Questions that were asked about our backgrounds and what we're doing and where we came from, our family life, and all those type of things. And a lot of that involved questions that we had previously answered on a lot of the Skype interviews and the questionnaires we submitted. And the producers had this all laid out so they knew which questions to ask us to get at those answers. So a lot of the involved in doing this whole series was repetition of a lot of things that you think you said a hundred times. But it's necessary to repeat it because you don't know what part of it's going to be used in the show and which part isn't. So we went through uh, a lot of that during the interviews, and each interview I don't believe was any more than 30, 45 minutes, and, but we had to go through all the people. Tina and I were the last two people on the schedule to be interviewed. However, by the time they got to us, time had run out in the day, and so we had to go back to the hotel. And so there was fear in both Tina and I because we're thinking, oh God, they're only going to take eight. They've already interviewed the other eight already, and we're the only two who haven't been interviewed. Okay, what's going to happen? But we didn't let that fluster us. You know, we sort of just hugged each other and just said, you know, we'll see what goes on, what happens. That evening, we did go to dinner. Not everyone. I think it was a big group of us went to dinner at... Uh, one of the local restaurants and we sat around and talked enjoyed the company of each other and it was just a good time and I believe at this meal there had to be at least I think there were nine I believe there were at least nine of us there was only one person maybe two potentially two who weren't of, of the cookers who were not there we then all went back to the hotel hung around the lobby a little bit and then all of us just went back to our respective rooms and waiting for our curtain call of meeting the van Tuesday morning to take us to the set. So Tuesday morning we're all in the lobby and we're all standing around just talking to each other. We had breakfast, breakfast served at the hotel. I think it started at 6 a.m. so we all ate and nobody, there's no talk about who's there and who's not there. We're just sitting around talking. And one of the producers came in, I believe it was Blue. And the first thing she said was, you are our top eight. And of course, then we looked around and said, okay, who's not here? We're the top eight. So missing was, I think, Amanda and a young man named Fong. And we were told that they 
were headed back home and that we would be the eight who would be filming the first challenge, which was going to be that day Tuesday. And everybody relaxed a little bit because we realized that we made the cut. And anyway, it was, we made the cut. So let's start with Tuesday's challenge.